right, I think we can all agree we've seen a few videos on the Primal RC Raminator 1 5th scale gas powered 49cc, uh, you know, four wheel drive behemoth monster truck. You know, I've never seen anything like this. If you haven't seen any videos on it, we have several on it, but I've been getting a lot of writings lately saying, yeah, I thought you were in love with this truck. Where did it go? What happened? And uh, I got to say, everything about this truck has been phenomenal for me. In fact, the more the stock engine broke in, the faster it got, the more it loosened up. And the best part about it is it was like about $120, you know, Canadian. You know, you can get these little, uh, you know, mini pocket bike engines, fairly inexpensive. There's a ton of mods out there for them. Here is the clutch on the stock engine. You can see everything there. Pretty good shape for what was going on there. So you'd wonder why the heck I have the stock engine out. Well, a lot of people actually had seen on my Instagram that I got a TMR, which is TM our performance uh, uh, engine for it and on, on my Instagram feed I was so excited to say I was going to get it installed and install it I did but I did not do it on camera because I thought you know there was other install videos uh, Primal RC uh, they did an amazing engine swap video that I could never do any better at it was fantastic I used it to help me swap the engine out look at this right here ta-da I love how it looks like a Punisher skull on the side almost, hey? Doesn't that look like a skull? Now, the whole thing is, is why haven't I run the engine if I've installed it? You'll see my pipe is kind of burnt right there. And that is a very good question indeed. In fact, to get this engine in, you have to remove these uh, top um, braces, you have to remove some pieces on the bottom, remove pieces on the bottom, and then you have to drill a new hole for the uh, stock exhaust pipe to sit on there. So I was really excited. I thought, geez, I'm just gonna bypass this. We're gonna take this out about a month and a half ago from the time of this filming now, and just rip it and just, you know, have a great time and I installed the engine on this incredibly heavy truck they say it's 80 pounds I don't quite think it's quite 80 pounds even though it's all solid CNC beautifulness in here all metal dual servos I, I I could go on about this truck all day long and why it's amazing look at even Alan from TMR even engraved my name in the top of this engine because uh, it was special and sent out to me for this purpose and thank you Alan for discussing this with me today uh, because I knew that I did not want to do any kind of damage to the brand at all because he is known for creating awesome engines and what happened was when I installed the engine into this truck I noticed it had a really low end bog to it no matter what like here on this everyone was always telling me in the very first running video when the engine had no break in time at all that I was supposed to be adjusting the carb settings like I didn't know what I was doing this only has a high a high needle on here right there is no low speed setting it's a cheap engine the carb is what it is well this one has a high and low setting which is awesome uh, there's a small choke on there as well the whole stack everything is fantastic but the low end bog shocked me I, I, I I thought, geez, this is really unusual when I fired it up and I tried to rip out of my garage. There was no real speed at all. In fact, <laughs> for this engine that was supposed to be like a thousand or more, uh, it didn't seem to be any faster than this engine at all. And so I was really concerned because here was somebody that obviously was trying to do something nice for me, send me a good engine for this, this huge truck, and their video looks amazing. And, I, and, and so I phoned him and I said, listen, what's going on with the low end bog? And he said, no, no, totally normal. You know, the, it's uh, just the way it goes. And, it, you know, once it gets up and speed a little bit and once it breaks in a bit, you'll get it going much faster. Well, I got the flu. <laughs> Bad timing. I got the flu. Had to wait a couple of weeks to get through that. And then I tried to run it again. And no matter what, it was almost like it was getting worse. I was trying to get it going. You see the pipe actually had some real heat issues there. And so what we finally figured out when I called him back, because finally the truck almost wasn't even moving anymore. 
And it was only after about five minutes. And he said, Aaron, Alan said to me from the company, he said, Aaron, the, the clutch that I sent you is an aluminum clutch. And he says, I'm thinking what's happened. And he says, I hate to say this because I wasn't the first one to be reporting this. It was on the very first run of engines, the clutch that they used was just too soft. And there's not just that. Like he did do tuning to the clutch itself and did the math on the springs and everything. This of course being the stock one. I'll be pulling this engine out here pretty soon uh, uh, to replace the clutch. Uh, but what had happened was that this pipe itself, this stock pipe, is basically, it looked like another pipe I had uh, for a, a, a 34cc engine, like a two-stroke. And it's, it's so small. And so the stock pipe itself is not the right pipe to be running with an engine like this. Number one, it cannot breathe at all. And so Alan was working on a new pipe. This whole time I was having this problem, he was already working on a new pipe uh, and said, I have a prototype pipe, which is ugly as <laughs> but if you want to fix it and paint it yourself, it will almost be, uh, you, you will see a huge improvement uh, with the new clutch and the pipe. Uh, and the, the final pipe is coming down the road. Plus there is new clutch springs as well. So this is what happened to to my Primal RC monster truck. The other thing that happened I was struggling with was there is a servo right there, which is for the throttle. Well, the, some of the servos that Primal uses are reverse servos from what normal servos, like they're reverse directions. So you've got to get a special wire if you want to put something else in there. I did put a strong waterproof Tekken uh, uh, servo back there, totally element proof, uh, lots of torque for the throttle. Uh, and I also noticed the throttle line can get stuck. Now it's not just this stack here. It was on both engines. I noticed that it can kind of stick a little bit there. So I'm still Still working with that to figure it out, but now you kind of know what's going on with my uh, Primal RC Raminator. Let me show you the pipe that he sent me. Okay, so here's this pipe, which is a little bit larger than this stock. Uh, this isn't a stock one. This is a Victory RC pipe for, uh, I believe it's a low C5. Basically, it's like the same size. Look at that same size and so then when he sent me this big fella look at this you can tell i wanted to call it a different word there because it is impressive it's been used beaten and abused but he said this is definitely going to improve the performance plus i have another clutch look at the size of the room like look at the room right so basically what was happening in a nutshell because i've probably lost everybody comment if you're still watching right now yeah basically what was happening was the clutch was trying to expand when I was trying to get out of that low end bog. It was getting way too hot because it wasn't able to breathe properly out of this exhaust pipe and melted the clutch shoes because they're the wrong clutch shoes. And so TMR has sent me a new clutch, uh, new clutch shoes. Thank you guys. Yeah, let's have a look here. Here is the new clutch itself. All taped up because he actually made me a clutch puller. And so now this should be much better. Well, somebody has a video on YouTube where it's the three trucks that are lined up. The stock truck, the one with the TMR, and then the one with the, P the TMR engine and pipe combo. And the engine and pipe combo almost look twice as fast as the stalker. So let's uh, figure out how to get the engine back out. for the gas tank, the front brace. Now here's the gas tank in relation to where the engine is. I've already taken out this cross brace. What I have to do now is go underneath, get you in here, and remove this gas line from the carb. When the tube comes out, I'm going to thread a screw into the end of the tube so it is closed off. 
Okay, the gasoline immediately wants to come out. And of course that stops any gas from coming out. I'm just undoing the final two bolts on the back brace. And I can remove the gas tank altogether. Then I need to remove the filter with that screw right there. And I'll also remove this um, throttle cable from the throttle linkage. screws underneath that you have to get to to release the engine right up in here there's three of them I'll show you look at all this CNC work it's beautiful forgive all the extra lubrication I have in there that was sprayed on there but there are that one screw you can see straight ahead and then the two side screws here is a brace we need to get that undone Now look at the three different pipes, right? This is the one for the low C. This is the one that, I don't know how this is the stock pipe on that engine for the four wheels that are trying to turn it. Especially when I put a, a, a larger engine on there, no wonder it wasn't able to breathe. That's why it got so hot. I was wondering, I'm looking forward to seeing what those clutch shoes look like. Okay, number one, let's have a look at the clutch shoes. The clutch shoes themselves don't look too worn out. And look, look at that. There's a score right in the middle of that clutch shoe. I wonder what the hell happened. Oh my, you see this? Look at this, right here versus right here. There's no E-clip here. I had an E-clip pop off. I, how the heck did that happen? Well, regardless, I don't know. I don't see any damage from the clutch shoes on the bell. On the inside of the bell looks clean. That looks fine. Oh well, okay, well at least there we got an idea of what's gonna go on. I'm gonna still replace this clutch uh, and uh, test it all out. I'm actually gonna call Alan, run over the uh, scenario with him, see what he says. One thing I wanna say about Alan, uh, he has always been amazing at TMR. Uh, the first moment I even had a problem, he was on it and uh, he knew I was gonna have to update you guys on what was going on here. And uh, I'm happy so far, it's a little bit of a bummer when brand new products come out I am very fortunate to be on the leading edge sometimes of products and they have had them all quite worked out but with the new pipe ta-da and with the new engine ta-da and with the new clutch I put on the inside it should be just in time for it to be minus 25 degrees celsius and way too cold to take it outside <laughs> guys thanks a lot for tuning in I know you all wanted some tech video so I hope there it is and uh, let me know if you're watching right now comment down below what do you think of the beautiful primal rc raminator you've seen the videos you've seen some of the pictures out there leave your thoughts and we'll see you in the next episode of rc adventures now get outside and have fun with rc or if it's damn too cold stay inside and build one bye